welcome back to my channel. Today I have a huge empties video. I have seriously been hoarding this giant bag of empty products for like months. I think the last time I did an empties video was in February and I've seriously been like procrastinating and terrified to go through this because it's so huge. So apologies. Let's just go ahead and start with what I see right here on the top. And seriously, this looks really disgusting. Um, you guys will have to excuse that. But this is the When by Chaz Dean Sweet Almond Mint Cleansing Conditioner. I think I did talk about this in my previous empties video. This is pretty much what I use as a shampoo. Um, it is the consistency of a conditioner, but you use it to cleanse your hair. So I use this first and then I use a normal conditioner or like a hair mask. So um, I really, really love this stuff. I actually bought a trio from Sephora, which I'm using now and I have different scents, but I believe this is like the original, the Sweet Almond Mint, and it's really, really nice. Okay, so speaking of hair masks, I actually have three like right here at the top of my bag and two of them are from the same brand. These are both Carol's Daughter. One of them is the, I'll talk about this one first because I know for sure I like this one a lot better. This is the Sacred Tiare Anti-Breakage and Anti-Frizz Restoring Hair Mask from Carol's Daughter. You can find this at Target, that's where I buy them. This for me was kind of like an alternative to the Macadamia Oil Hair Mask because that one is like in the 30 something dollar price range. This one's a lot cheaper, I want to say it's like $17 or something, so like half the price. And it's really nice, it has coconut oil in it, shea, it definitely leaves your hair feeling very, very hydrated. I know for sure I actually went through two of these Sacred Tiare ones, and I really, really enjoyed it. Now, the other one, same brand, and I will say this one does say it's a restoring hair mask. This one, it says it's a hair smoothie. This one I still liked, obviously I used it all the way up, but I didn't like it as much as the Sacred Tiare. And this is the Black Vanilla Moisture and Shine Hair Smoothie for dull, dry, and brittle hair. Again, this was okay. Um, I would say if you're like at the store and you're picking between the two, definitely go for the turquoise, the Sacred Tiare one. It's a lot more hydrating, but they work nicely as a good hair mask. Obviously, this one's not supposed to be a hair mask. I'm, I don't know what a hair smoothie is supposed to be. I used it as a mask or like conditioner. And then this is another hair mask. Oh my god, I'm so sorry you guys. This stuff in here is so gross. This is actually a hair growth treatment. Um, and it's from Lee Stafford. It's in this pink tub. And it says, treatment for hair that never grows past a certain length. If you watch like the very first video on my channel, which is like a Michael Kors handbag review, very close to the time when I filmed that video, I had cut my hair into a bob. Not like a lob, but like a bob, like a short bob. So that was back in the fall of 2013, and I've been trying to grow my hair out ever since. Obviously, I've come quite a long way from there, but um, I like using things that say they promote hair growth, and this is obviously one of them. To me, again, this was okay. This definitely does not compare to my macadamia oil mask. I don't know, I remember it kind of smelling like a cologne, which is okay. Uh, obviously I used it up, it did the trick, and I'm not sure that it actually helped with my hair growth, but whatever. Let's just say I wouldn't like hugely recommend that. Here's the other empty sacred tiara mask that I used. Here is another when cleansing conditioner that I used. Okay, I'm going to try to continue with hair stuff, but I can just tell you guys it's going to be random. There's probably going to be things that pop up towards the bottom that I wish I had talked about earlier on just because this bag is so big. It's like really hard to see what's going on. But this is the Batiste dry shampoo in like the leopard bottle. It's the sassy and daring wild scent. I really like Batiste dry shampoo. Um, People talk about it incessantly, I don't really need to say anything about it. It's a good dry shampoo. This is the It's a 10 Miracle Leave-In product. This was like a YouTube made me buy it kind of thing, but I love this stuff. I have repurchased it already. Really, really like this. It just It's a leave-in conditioner spray. Um, so you put it on your hair when it's damp. I like to brush it through with my wet brush and I just believe it makes my hair feel a lot softer and I'm hoping that it's like making it healthier and less damaged. So I have already repurchased this. I do really enjoy it. Um, it has like 10 different benefits, which I'm not going to go through them all, but basically it just kind of like detangles your hair, makes it smoother and shinier and all those good things. So really, really do like this stuff. 
I'm just like sitting here with my giant bag of empties. Isn't this cute? No, it's really not. Okay. Another hair product that I really, really like is this Bumble and Bumble Surf Spray. I have now kind of moved on to loving the Surf Infusion, which is their surf spray with oil infused into it. This is just the traditional one. I think this is the second bottle that I've been through. I love like any sort of wavy, beachy, texturizing spray. That is my jam. Um, I don't think this one is worth the money to be honest with you it's kind of expensive and i know there's some really great beach wavy hairsprays that you can get at the drugstore or for a much cheaper price than this one so i don't know if i would repurchase this one the other one that i use now the surf infusion i love and i think is worth the money but this one i think you can probably go with a, a cheaper alternative to be honest this is another little hair mist that i really really enjoyed i kind of want to buy another one um, this is the Herbivore Botanicals for Urban Outfitters Rose Hair Perfume Mist. It's exactly what it says it is. There's like, it looks like there's like a tiny like one spray left. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. It smells like an absolutely like natural like herby kind of rose scent, not like an artificial or sweet. I love the scent of this. I think some people probably wouldn't like it too much, but I really really like it like sometimes the dry shampoos do have scents but sometimes like if you've straightened your hair and it just smells like straightener or like burnt hair or something it's nice to have like a hair mist to kind of freshen it up so that's why i really like this okay here is another dry shampoo this one's from dove it's the hair therapy refresh and care volume dry shampoo i think i honestly prefer the batiste to this I don't really have many thoughts about it, to be honest with you. It's just a dry shampoo, but it's not my favorite one. It definitely leaves a white cast. It was okay. Okay, I think I'm gonna move on to skincare now because I think I've tried to get through all of the hair things that I see. We may come across another one somewhere down the line, but these I did mention in my previous empties video. I go through these like water. These are the facial radiance pads from First Aid Beauty. I recently bought a new kind of toning pad, which I talked about in my July favorites video. Um, I'll link that down below if you missed it. But these have been like my OG cleansing exfoliating toning pads that I love. They stay really, really moist. They're just thin little circular cotton pads to rub all over your face and they're really good on my sensitive skin. Um, they're alcohol free, they don't leave your skin feeling dried out, but it's good. I feel like it's good if you have kind of like acne prone skin or I have kind of like oily skin sometimes. So I just really like these and I like using these um, like in the mornings before I do my makeup. These are a good kind of go-to um, cleansing and toning pad. Okay, next I have a couple more products from First Aid Beauty. I really love that brand for skincare. And this is the, um, I'll start with the face cleanser. This is obviously quite a large tube of the face cleanser that I used up. I really, really like this. It's like a white, kind of like a creamy foaming cleanser. It removes makeup, dirt, oils, all that kind of thing. I usually remove my makeup with some other sort of makeup remover first and then go in with a cleanser like this. But I really did enjoy it. I haven't repurchased it yet. I, I definitely think I would repurchase this though. I really do like it and I would recommend it again for sensitive skin. And going along with that is the Ultra Repair Cream from First Aid Beauty. I think this may or may not have been in one of my previous favorites as well. This is just kind of like a thick, white, creamy moisturizer. I use it all over my face. I typically use this moisturizer at night. I don't want to say it's a heavier moisturizer. It's really not. It really is pretty lightweight, but I have two moisturizers. One I prefer to use in the day, and this is the one that I prefer to use at night. So I really do enjoy this a lot, and I have repurchased it. I'm continuing to use it now. So I definitely would recommend both of these products from Verse Beauty. Okay, so speaking of needing like a makeup remover before I go in with the cleanser, I have three different makeup removers here that I can see. The first one is Bioderma. Classic, um, so popular, everyone talks about this. This one is the Sensibio H2O. I ordered this online from Beautylish and I got two of these. I actually used them both up. Um, I don't think I put them both in here just because I knew I already had one and I was like, I don't need to put two bottles in there and this bag was so full. But this is like a cleansing water. It completely removes your makeup. I feel like it does do a decent job at removing eye makeup as well. Very, very gentle on the skin and around the eyes. It doesn't sting, it doesn't burn. It does taste really bad. Like if you're removing your lipstick and you lick your lips or something afterwards, this stuff does not taste good. But other than that, no complaints. Would totally repurchase it. Really do like it a lot. I wish it was a little bit more accessible in the US. Like I wish I could just go 
to a store and buy it and I didn't have to order it online, but what can you do? Another makeup cleanser. This is like completely rubbed off. I think I might have used this in my Get Unready With Me routine. I really don't remember, but I, I need to film another one of those anyway. This is the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. Again, the wording is like totally rubbed off of this. And this is basically just like a white kind of oily like cleansing balm. And you just rub it all over your face. It completely takes your makeup off. It definitely removes all of your makeup, all of your eye makeup. The one thing I don't like about this is the packaging. Like right now I'm using a cleansing oil that's in a pump so I don't have to dip my finger in it every day. And that's the one thing I didn't love about this. But other than that, it works really well. It's It was great on my sensitive skin. It didn't break me out. So I like it. I just don't know if I would buy it again because I've found another cleansing oil that I like better. So... This is yet another makeup remover. This is a specifically an eye makeup remover. Like, like I was saying with the Bioderma, it removes eye makeup decently, but if you want kind of a more heavy duty eye makeup remover for days when you're really packing it on, this one is great. It's the Neutrogena Oil-Free Eye Makeup Remover. It is effective and gentle, just like it says on the bottle. It's kind of like an oily solution. You have to shake it up before you use it. I just use it on a cotton pad and kind of just like put it on my eyes, let it soak the makeup off for a second or two and then wipe it all away. I have repurchased this like a million times in my life. I'm gonna to continue to buy it. It's, it's really good stuff. Okay, next I have three different eye creams and one of them is from um, First Aid Beauty. It's the Eye Duty Triple Remedy. I think they may have changed the packaging of this. I got this a really long time ago and that was actually why I threw it away. I don't think I used this up all the way but it expires after six months and I knew I had had it for way more than six months at the time I threw it away, but it's really nice. Basically, it has this metal tip applicator, which is really nice and cooling and depuffing in the mornings. And then the cream itself is like this pinky color, so it really kind of helps brighten your under eyes immediately before you even put any makeup on. I really do like this. I probably would repurchase it. I'm just getting through a different eye cream currently. But um, this is raved about on YouTube and I completely agree with everyone. It is really, really great. And I definitely think I would repurchase it. I just haven't bought it yet. So another one that has also kind of like a pinky tone, which brightens the under eye is this Origins Ginseng Cream. And again, I don't think I use this one up. This one also says it expired within six months and I had it for a really long time. It's starting to smell kind of weird. So I really did like this. I was using this every day for a while, honestly, until I got this one. These are kind of similar to me, but I way prefer the packaging of the First Aid Beauty. So I would say maybe the Ginseng, the Origins one, is a little bit more hydrating than this one, but they're pretty similar. And I think if I were going to repurchase one or the other, it would definitely be this one. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about more makeup products. And the first one I'm going to start off with is this too Faced Hangover RX Primer. This is like my favorite primer of life. I've already gone through this whole one and I've already repurchased another one. I will say it doesn't really like fill in your pores or mattify or do anything like that. It does just really replenish your skin. Gives you a nice smooth canvas to start your makeup on and it is just very nourishing and I really like it. Next, I've got two face powders, and one of them is actually from Too Faced as well. I love the packaging of this one. It's so cute. This is their Primed and Poreless Press Powder, and this is a really great thing to take on the go with you. I keep this in my purse like at all times, and it comes with like a little um, puff, and you can just use it to mattify your face. It doesn't have any color to it. It's like a white or translucent powder. It says it's a skin smoothing priming powder and finishing veil. I really just use it to kind of, like I said, touch up like oily or shiny places on my face throughout the day. And I totally love this. I've already repurchased it. Um, the other powder that I used up is from the drugstore and it is a Physician's Formula Covertox 10 Wrinkle Therapy Face Powder. I'm not sure where the wrinkle therapy really comes into this, like if it really helps with wrinkles, but this one does have color to it. This one was in the shade Translucent Medium. You can see there is a little bit left in there, but basically it was just like a ring of product left and then it all broke down. So I'll probably go and buy another one of these. I really do like it. I'm just trying to use up some of my other face powders before buying more, but I would recommend this. I did really like it and I think it's a great option from the drugstore. Okay, next I have a concealer and I have also already repurchased this. Um, this is a concealer I do like. It's the Paracone MD No Concealer Concealer. The reason why I like this is for days when I'm being a little bit more lightweight with my makeup. So if I don't wanna use like a full coverage 
more like thick concealer. This one's really lightweight and it has SPF in it. This is SPF 35. So um, it is just nice and brightening. I, I do will say I think the shade range is really bad. It says that this one is number two light to medium. I think they maybe only have like two shades. So that's the one downside to this. But like I said, I did already repurchase this. I think it's a great concealer for the summer months when you don't want to wear a ton of makeup. And I'm almost already done with the other one that I've repurchased as well. So I do go through this stuff really quickly and I do like it. Okay, next I have four different mascaras to go through. Um, the first one is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. Love, love, love this mascara. I have like a tester size right now. If I didn't have the tester size, I would definitely go out and repurchase this. This is one of the best mascaras I've ever used. It's great. A lot of people on YouTube rave about it. For a reason, it's wonderful. It really builds up the volume, the length, the drama. It's amazing. Um, the other one I have here is the L'Oreal Voluminous Miss Manga Mascara. I didn't love this one. I heard a lot of hype about it on YouTube and what I didn't like about it was that the wand is kind of like flexible. Do you see that? It's like a flexible wand. I'm not a fan of that. I didn't like that. It didn't have enough control for me and I, I definitely don't think I would repurchase this. I really did not enjoy it very much. The other one, I really did like this a lot. This is the It Cosmetics Tightline. This is a full lash length black primer. So this is actually not a, like a mascara mascara, but again, it's great for like no makeup makeup days when you want a little bit of something, but you don't want to do a full blown like Too Faced Better Than Sex. It has a really tiny wand. And it has a, this one has a blue strip around it because this one is the waterproof version. And basically the idea with this is you're supposed to get that tiny wand all the way down into your lash line and kind of stamp it on there to create almost like an eyeliner effect. And then you run it through your lashes to kind of prime your lashes for mascara. So I have repurchased this. When I repurchased it, I bought the non-waterproof version. The waterproof version is honestly really hard to get off at night, so I bought the one that's not waterproof and I think I like that one a little bit better, but I do really like the product and the concept. Another mascara that I've repurchased like three or four times I love, I actually just ordered a new one that hasn't come in yet. This is the Clinique Bottom Lash Mascara. If you're not familiar, it's just like a teeny tiny mascara exclusively for your bottom lashes and I got it in black. I think all the ones I've ever got are in black and it just works really well for getting into your bottom lashes. That's that's really all there is to say about it. Okay, next I have a couple of brow products. I went through two of the Hourglass Arch Brow pencils. These are the exact same product. It looks like they did change the packaging from one to the other. The coloring looks slightly different. But yeah, these are a brow pencil. I can't really show you because they're completely used up, but they have a really cool shape. This, um, I use this in my like brow routine and it's pretty much what I use on my brows every single day. I got the shade Soft Brunette. It does have a spoolie on the other side. Really, really like this stuff. I do just seem to go through them quite quickly because I use them every day, but it's my favorite brow pencil, hands down over the Anastasia, over anything in life, the Hourglass Arch Brow phenomenal, worth the money. Then I used up one of the Anastasia Clear Brow Gels. I also use this every day, also use this in my brow routine. This stuff gets really gross when it's been out for a while. I don't think I need to say much about this. It's a it's a clear brow gel to kind of set your brows. It does like keep them in place all day. It does leave them feeling like a tad bit crispy, but I don't mind that because it keeps them in place all day. I went through two of the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Mist Sprays. I have already repurchased this. I love this. This is my favorite setting spray. Um, spray this on my face after I'm done with my makeup and it helps it last longer throughout the day. I literally spray this on my face every single day. Like even if I'm wearing light makeup, probably unnecessary, but I just really like it. This is like another setting spray situation that I bought. I think I got this at Urban Outfitters. It was really random. It looks like it's like a Korean makeup brand or something. But anyway, it's the Perfection Makeup Mist. This one really is like a true mist. Oh look, there's still a little bit coming out of there. Feels really empty though. Anyway, um, this one comes out like a true mist, whereas the Urban Decay is like a true spray. I hope that makes sense and you guys understand the difference. But this says it's a makeup fixer, micro spray, vitamin water, high moisturizing. I like this, it was okay. I really did actually quite like it. I mean, obviously use it up, but that Urban Decay one, I don't know if it's just, it's hard to beat. So I don't know if I'll repurchase this, but I have nothing bad to say about it. It worked, I liked it, that's, that's about it. 
Okay, now a couple of nail things and we will be done. Um, I have one nail polish in here and I rarely like use up nail polish. This one I did use up probably like two thirds of it, but it got super, super dried out. And I don't know, like it's completely unusable now. It's like literally hard. And I think it's because it's such an intense glitter polish. But I will say that I loved this glitter. It's one of the coolest glitter polishes I've ever owned. It has like all different colors of glitter in there. This is the freaky like Freud Formula X Sephora glitter polish. Really did like it a lot. It's kind of a crazy polish, but um, I like it. I probably would buy it again. I don't know. It just dried out so quickly. Then I used up two Sesh Vites. This one is actually completely used up, whereas this one just got really, really goopy towards the end. I wasn't able to use it up all the way. I just had to go out and buy a new one. It says that it lasts for 36 months. But yeah, this one, it just got so goopy and like really hard to use. This is my favorite top coat. It really makes your nails dry so quickly and it gives them like a very shiny kind of like gel-like finish. So do love Sesh Vite. Um, it just, it does tend to get kind of goopy towards the end. Finally, I have two nail polish removers. This one is like your average, completely regular nail polish remover that you get at the drugstore. It really wasn't that great. I really really hated using this because I'm used to using acetone and this was like not doing it for me. This I love. This is from Walgreens. I think the Studio 35 Beauty is the Walgreens brand. This is a 100% acetone nail polish remover and what I like about it is the packaging. This top like pump, you just like put your cotton pad on there and pump it down and it disperses so you don't have to like open a bottle and worry about it being messy. Um, but yeah, I mean, acetone works wonders on removing nail polish. I think we all know that. So that is going to be it for my empties video today. I know that was a ton of stuff, but I hope some of my little mini reviews were helpful to you. Let me know if there's any products you've used up recently that you loved or you hated in the comments down below. And that's going to be it, you guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye. And that's going to be it, you guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye.